And welcome back to Pure Nebraska here on the program. We like to put the spotlight on the organization known as Common Ground. The group is made up of farm women in Nebraska and around the country who are focused on getting a positive message out about agriculture. Joining us now is Joan Ruskamp from Dodge, and thank you for being here today. Thank you. Hey, morning. Joan. Yeah. Good morning. Thanks for coming this morning. You're welcome. Yeah. How was your drive? Yeah, yeah, it was yeah. raining all the way. Christmas? Yeah. Right, right. You were just uh, discussing December being dry, and that's been an issue for us that have livestock. We've been having to deal with a lot more mud than we're used to in the month of December. Mm -hmm. So actually yeah. since Thanksgiving, um, a lot of you probably had snow or ice around Thanksgiving too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we had the same. And Mother mm -hmm. Nature doesn't know if there's a holiday or a Sunday. <laughs> Weather happens, whatever, right? So, yeah. Um, yeah, so that's a that's a. So talk about sometimes. that then. How are, yeah, how are you dealing with all that? With well, so and f as far as the feedlot, which is the, the role that Steve and I play in producing beef for people, we have to make sure that the cattle have somewhere to lay down, um, and that's the big thing. So first of all, we want to make sure that they're fed, um, that nutritious diet that, that helps them to thrive. So um, we're making sure that they're continually getting fed on time um, and the rations that support the energy needs they have. So when it gets really cold, sometimes we up the energy in that ration so that they have more energy to produce heat you know, just to maintain, but we're not wanting them to maintain, we want them to thrive and be putting on weight. So mm. we're adjusting that for weather. Our temperatures haven't been super cold, so we're not getting as much snow, but a lot of rain, and so that makes mud. And I don't know if your viewers notice that when it rains in December, it doesn't go away very fast. Mm. The, everything stays muddier longer because it's not like summertime where it soaks in nice. It and, just cools on the ground. Right, mm -hmm. right. So in the yards, too, it doesn't soak away as well. We have slope for our, our yard, so that does allow for, for some drainage, but it doesn't soak in and evaporate. And so we're pushing that mud, actually. We're pushing it off to the sides along the fences and then keeping the middle areas where they can lay down and still be comfortable. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. That's and the key. I know you provided some pictures of some of the winter care that sure. you provide yes. to the animals. Yes. And here's the pictures now. Maybe you can kind of preference what we're right. seeing Right, so of course the feeding is, is key, you know, and you can see the cattle, they're all lined up there. Um, they come up to that, that cement feed bunk and and they're spaced out accordingly. You don't see a lot of snow, but you can see that a little bit of frosty, a little bit of ice that we've been dealing with too. When mm -hmm. we're just at those freezing temperatures, um, none of us like to see ice. And here Steve's in um, a tractor with what we call a rear end bucket. And what that bucket does is it scrapes off, he's on cement, and we have a pretty thick piece of cement up there by that, that bunk line. So the cattle, we can bed that actually, mm -hmm. and they can lay on that if they want to. Um, but we, we try to get that mud off and out of the way so they can actually go out on the dirt if they want to. And they'll, oh. they'll lay wherever it's, it's pretty much dry. Although there will be some that choose the, the sloppiest place, and I don't know if they just have a different preference for where they want to lay, but it's really strange how one <laughs> will choose to actually lay in, a, in an odd spot. But um, this is, uh, I mean, we work into the night hours, and so here um, Steve is spreading a cornstalk bale. Um, you'll, you might see bales out on cornfields right now. Those, that's extra corn stalks that farmers can pick up and put in bales. We'll buy them, and we can use it for feed or bedding. And so we'll, we'll spread that out with this machine. And, and then you, uh, the cattle, are, they love that. Oh, yeah. Um, they'll, uh, they'll chew on it, and then they'll also lay down. And so um, these guys are pretty happy. They're, they're ready for market right here. And so we really focus on those, those guys being really comfortable. So yeah. That's excellent. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, here's a younger group, same thing. Um, as long as they have a place to lay down, and they tend to, if we put some cornstalk bedding out, they'll choose to lay there because they also will chew on it too. So it kind of satisfies both the, the want to mm -hmm. chew on something, a roughage material, and then be comfortable laying down too. So okay. the work continues all the time. Right. It There's does. something to think about. And you know, sometimes people think they're outside. That must be really cruel. But we have to remember they have a hide that's about an eighth of an inch thick. And my nephew and I were Googling, you know, what the difference is in our, our layer of skin. And it's about 10 times thicker than our skin. Mm -hmm. So if we imagine how many layers we can put on and the insulation that gives us, plus the hair that they develop. They're really designed for, for being able to adapt to that colder weather mm -hmm. and developing that, that, that hair that's on there, plus the, the ability to have that nice thick hide that gives us leather, so. Interesting, um, interesting. Yeah. 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 And well, it's good to see that you're taking care too. I mean, not only are they geared for the elements, but you're also taking steps right. to take I mean, care of animals them as well. survive out in the wild, but when they're with us, we want them to thrive. And so that's the whole key and the reason we do a lot of the extra steps that we're doing in our feed yards and on our ranches is we want them to thrive. Mm -hmm. um, they're not in the wild to survive, they're on our farms to thrive. And mm -hmm. so, um, and then when they thrive, we thrive and our, our customers thrive um, by utilizing that protein source. So um, we're, we're a big community together and hoping that all of us can can have better lives. Okay. All right. Thanks, Joan. You're welcome. Yeah, I appreciate <laughs> that.